Blessings to you. I want to give you some wisdom for life here. Glory to God. <clears throat> when the Father pitch you in a place, he likens the place to, to his field, his garden. Wherever God plants you, whatever assignment he gives to you, he, consider, he considers it his field, his garden. So when you get to a place, you can either become two things in that place, a servant or a serpent. The spirit of the Lord was speaking to me that whenever he plants or assigns a person to a region, a people, a person, you can either do two things towards that person. You can either become their servant or their serpent. So there are two positions. One is of life, one is of death. And that's why King Jesus told Adam, the day that you eat of this tree, you shall surely die. Because that tree was of death. So that tree was going to bring death to Adam. He could have remained a servant, which was keeping tender garden, or become a serpent, which is eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Now, one thing that I want you to catch that if you do choose to be a serpent, that means that now evil will dominate your information system. So your information system will create your rebellion. It will empower your distractions. It will increase your disrespect. It will intensify your offenses and it will magnify your criticism. Wow. Oh my God. I'm giving you some wisdom from the rivers of God. So the serpent is a knowledge, a information system that will be imparted to you is like the mark of the beast. It's a spirit of antichrist that will make you go against authority. It'll make you go against leadership. It'll make you go against instructions. It will make you defiant against truth and it will cause you to become uh, hateful, jealous, deceitful. It will cause you to become tricky. It will cause you to lose dignity. Now that's what the serpent produces from the serpent's information system. But if you choose to be a servant, the servanthood impartation, it comes with information that arouses your kindness. It multiplies your compassion. So your compassion for who you're serving will be at an all time high. You'll start seeing them for, from the point of view of God. And as a matter of fact, you will actually be so compassionate towards who you're serving that their heart will become more important to you than life. The servanthood stream is what King Jesus did when he got on his knees and started washing the disciples' feet. When he was washing their feet, it was the servanthood information at work. So servanthood is technology. It's technology. It's God downloading in you an information system that makes your love perfect. If you choose to be a servant instead of, if you choose to become a servant instead of a serpent, God will empower you with thoughts of generosity. Generosity will rule you. Generosity will fuel you. And when you're in servanthood, you escape offenses. That's the powerful thing about when you become a servant. 
or, or you become uh, a genius in, in, in servanthood, servant, your mentality becomes enlightened by the gospel. Enlightened by the gospel. Princess, I read the comments. <laughs> I do read the comments, but I've been doing this for years, so I decide what get in my spirit. I understand that people are going to be saying things on this line that are that that is an attempt to to stop what the spirit is saying through me. And so I know how to multitask and multi look. So I see all of you all's comments. I know who you are. So, Princess, to answer your question, I do read the comments, but I know how to multi-look, multitask, multi-talk, and not be affected by the words that's being written here, but being affected by the words that God has given to me to give to you. And so I protect my servanthood in releasing this word so that you could hear it in the fashion that God gave it to me. I could be a serpent and choose the knowledge that I'm hearing people say on here. But I choose to be a servant and continue my task in the spirit that God gave it to me for me to finish it. So, th so that's also the servant realm determination. Servanthood it has an information system that gives you determination. So you will become determined when you're operating through the mantles of servanthood. And what does determination do? Determination is the elimination of distractions. Ermin or Ermin Powell. You can share my broadcast. I don't mind people making fun of me. Because if they did it to King Jesus, they're going to do it to us as well. We marvel not at the hatred. One thing that I can tell you uh, is w one thing that you could catch from that is that your determination to do right should always be greater than the persecution for doing right. That's one thing that you uh, is 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 a beautiful impartation to walk in from now on. Your boldness to do right should outweigh the persecution for doing right, and and you'll love your leader. So so I know that you love me. That's why, and that's a good sign. If you get angry if people make fun of me, that means that your heart honors me. You hate to see me dishonored. When we love people, we don't like when people talk about them. And we, we feel the urgency to protect them. But you're actually protecting me if you share me. Because this is why I was sent to the earth. I was sent to the earth for this. So you're helping me fulfill my task by helping me reach the souls. Now that brings me to another subject that I want to talk about. We're talking about the serpent and the servant here. But let's, I just had a revelation here. There was five loaves and two fish. I want to show you something that you never heard a day in your life. Imagine the two fish being souls. Because remember, King Jesus said, I'll make you a fisher of men. Imagine the two fish being souls. Now look, the two fish did not come alone. They came with five loaves. Loaves represent bread and bread can also represent Jesus or the word of God because Jesus is the word of God. I want you to see this. And so there's two fish which represent two people. 
And there's also five loaves which represent the grace of God, the word of God. Now, I want you to see this. In order for those two people, which is the two fish, to stay in love, to stay in the spirit, they have to lean to the five loaves for strength. Think about this. The five loaves is strengthening them to stay in unity. I want you to catch this, and this is so mighty to me. If the two fish disconnect from the five loaves, they will not be multiplying. They will not be multiplying. Kashonda Graham, I did talk about that in 2017, and it's good to see you. I know that you've been following me on and off for, for these years. That's good that you documented that. Because the prophets are always talking about things to come, and they laugh at us. When we say that it's coming, then when it actually happens, they say, well, where are the prophets? In in in. If you listen, we, we have always spoken before things happen. Like there are things that I'm saying now that people are saying, well, when's going to happen? When's going to happen? Because in December, I talked about people and I have a broadcast on here. December the 19th, I think on my page here, I prophesied that I saw demons coming out of the earth with face masks. I saw demons coming out of the earth with masks on their face. And if you look in your state right now, everybody is wearing a mask. And that was December the 19th, I believe, of 2019. Before there was any rules to wear masks to go into a store. And when I said that, I went into detail about how some people had on face masks that look like gas masks. And if you look at people now, they're wearing certain masks that are unique. Like they're not just wearing the medical mask. They're wearing the mask with like the oxygen tank in there. So that's good, Kashanda, that you kept notes of that. That's, that's beautiful. I'm glad that you remember that. So imagine the five loaves, the two fish. The two fish represent people. The five loaves represent grace. Five, it represents also the word of God in Jesus. Jesus is the word of God, Revelation tells us. So imagine how if two people, how can two walk together lest they be agreed? They're going to need the five loaves constantly if they're going to stay in oneness. Unity. Psalm 133 talks about unity. And if those two fish, I liken them to two people, who are without the five loaves, they cannot multiply. And so if you think about this, this is why relationships never get into the multiplying realm the fruitfulness realm. When I say multiplying, I mean to advance in God, to mature, to go further, to go further. So the reason why the fish can even be multiplied is because there's five loaves. There's the grace, there's the word of God, there's Jesus. That's accompanying the two fish, which I liken to two people. And that's what causes them to multiply and be a blessing to others. I want you to catch this. Now, this word goes in alignment with marriage, the word of God, divine relationships in general. If two people are going to be effective in what God put them together to do, whether it be man and man to do a business for God, woman and woman to do an a, a, a entrepreneurship for God. If it's going to be successful, you're going to need the five loaves. The grace, the five is the grace. 
the loaves is the word of God, the bread of God, Jesus himself. I'm liking it to that and the bread can be many other things as well. But I'm giving you this revelation It's going to need the five loaves to accompany it so that that idea can multiply. So that that endeavor, that entrepreneurship, that assignment, that idea, that grace, that that task can multiply and go forward. When God puts you in a place, you'll either be a serpent or a servant. You choose who you will become in your assignment. You choose what you will become in your assignment. You can either choose to be a serpent or you can choose to be a servant. Now, I want to say this. Serpenthood destroys servanthood and servanthood destroys serpenthood. If you take your notes, write that down. That's a wisdom door from Prophet Joshua Holmes. If you choose to be a serpent, you can't be a servant. And if you choose to be a servant, it'll stop you from being a serpent. The more that you serve, the more that your heart is purified. The more that you serve, the more your soul is free from sin. Remember what King Jesus said, you cannot serve two masters. And so somebody has to master you, either the Lord Jesus or the devil. Either the Lord Jesus or the devil. Either Moses or Pharaoh. Either Elijah or Jezebel. Either Jesus, King Jesus or Herod. You see that? Somebody has to dominate you. It ha Somebody has to be your master. So imagine this people of God. If you, if you are in the place of servanthood, serpenthood cannot touch you. But you have to listen to the information in servanthood that's going to keep you from being touched by serpenthood. Because the way that God was protecting Adam was don't mess with this tree. And so there's a, there's a form of information that you're not supposed to know. There's a form of information that you're not supposed to entertain. And if you're curious, you're going to become double-minded. Curiosity is the law for double-mindedness. You taking notes, you can write that down. Wisdom doors of Prophet Joshua Holmes. Curiosity is the law for double-mindedness. And curiosity will make your pursuit contaminated. Are you, are you remembering this? Curiosity will make your pursuit contaminated. Boredom can create your openness to wrong news. Boredom, it can create your receptivity of wrong information. Boredom. If your instruction from God does not excite you any longer, it is proof that you have become a serpent. If you don't have conviction when you don't do your assignment, you have become a serpent. How do you know if you have become a serpent? Because what God formerly showed you is no longer your interest. It doesn't even interest you no longer. My God, think about that. Think about that. Think about that. Saints, I want you to see this. What is one of the things that you can see from Judas and Peter? That Judas lost his desire to be a disciple. And Peter, he kept his desire to learn how to become a better disciple. Because when King Jesus confronted Peter, he said, do you love me? He said, yes, Lord, you know I love you. He, in his mind, he's willing to learn how to love now, he already thinks that he loves Jesus because like, like the religious world, 
people will tell you that they love Jesus since they was born. I love Jesus since I was a child. How could you love him since you was a child? You didn't know Jesus. You don't know his rebukes. You don't know how he, he'll cut you with his words. That the word of God is sharper than any two-edged sword. He'll divide your soul and spirit. He'll knock you down with his corrections. Jesus will call you a dog. Jesus will talk to you rough. Jesus will disrespect your dignity because you have a level of pride on you. Jesus will give you a cross that will crush your arrogance. That's King Jesus. So, so when you're a little child, you don't know the fullness of King Jesus. So how could you love him? You can't love somebody that you don't know in totality because they may have sides to them that you won't love. <laughs> there is a reason why disciples follow King Jesus for a while until he said, eat of my flesh and drink of my blood. Because that side of Jesus was not revealed to them. When they discovered that side, they said, oh, no, Jesus, we can't do that. We can't do that, Jesus. And Jesus on some freaky stuff. He told us some drink of his blood. This is some vampire. This is some vampire fouls. He's trying to get us to drink the juice. I knew something was wrong when I saw Jesus up there. He, he waved his hand and that person fell out on the knee. I knew that. I knew something was weird when he was. And they started speculating. See, I told you, I told you, I told you we was going to see something on Jesus. Now, if they had chose to be a serpent, they could have adapted to what was revealed to them. But because there was a serpent, it took them out. Are you seeing what I'm saying? If they chose to be a servant, they could have heard King Jesus say that and they, the spirit of God would have gave them understanding. This is what this is what I'm saying. But because they chose to be a serpent, negativity system, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, that system penetrated their soul and convinced them that King Jesus was out of order. Now, saints. Remember what I just said, and I, I want to simplify this so that you can remember the words of the Lord Jesus and what he spoke to me. When God gives you an instruction, you can either be a serpent or a servant. When you are distracted, when you are critical, when you have the wrong mind, the wrong spirit, the wrong company, the wrong seeds in your heart, you become a serpent. But when you are meditating on the word, when you're praising God, when you're thanking God, when you're fasting, when you're in the spirit, you'll become a servant. And even if there is a problem, you'll have wisdom to fix it. Daniel was in a place in the spirit. So when the king had a dream and he was killing everybody because the magicians couldn't find out the interpretation. Nobody was able to find out the interpretation. Do you know what Daniel did? He was in a place of humility. He didn't judge the king. He didn't say, look at this murderer. He didn't criticize. He didn't do nothing. He was in the spirit and he became a servant instead of a serpent. God speaks to him, gives him the interpretation of the dream. And the king stops killing people in the kingdom. Servanthood stops death. Servanthood stops death. Look what Daniel did. He stopped the wrath of the king by being a solution to what the king was looking for. I can speak to you hours about how kings we get agitated when we're looking for an answer in our life and there's nobody there to supply the answer. I can talk to you about ours so that you can understand kings. Kings are men that have been given authority from God to be over kingdoms, assignments, task and God empowers them and increases their wisdom so that they can rule with righteousness and truth okay so think about this people of God servanthood stops death 
servanthood stops there. And let me also say this, that kings are servants. Are, are, are Kings are men that pass the test of servanthood and have been graduated to train others in servanthood. I'm going to say this one more time. Kings are men that pass the test of servanthood and they are now training others in servanthood as well. So now they are responsible to give you the information, the wisdom, so that you can operate in servanthood your, in your own life and be promoted and graduate. And so a king is not someone that just was given a silver spoon, a golden spoon. A king is someone that God tested if they would serve another king and they passed the test. So remember, I receive servanthood, not serpenthood. When you receive serpenthood, you become a distraction. You destroy the reason why God put you in the assignment. You destroy the reason why God put you with that man of God. Remember that. If you choose to be a serpent, you'll become an enemy to somebody that was sent to deliver you. How does that work? The children of Israel, they chose to become serpent. So the Bible said in uh, Corinthians chapter 10 that they was destroyed by serpents. They was destroyed by the very thing that they became. God put them with Moses to become Moses' servants. They were supposed to serve Moses. They had served Pharaoh, but they couldn't serve Moses. Wow. People of God, remember this, that make sure that you're not a better servant for Pharaoh, for bondage, than you are for Moses, the blessing. Have you given Pharaoh more of your energy, your attentiveness, your excellence, your pleasure, than you have given to Moses. Wow. Imagine that. That the children of Israel, they brought joy and pleasure to Pharaoh that created their bondage and pain. He was a hard taskmaster. When Moses came and prophesied to him, he increased their work and he destroyed their wages and he took them out. of their comfort their happiness he, he, he made the assignment harder are you a better servant for Pharaoh have you been a servant to Pharaoh but a serpent to Moses do you know who God pit in your life to deliver you with the information they give you? Their words bring life to you. Their words multiply your wisdom, enlarge your understanding, and attract favor to you. How will you respond to your Jesus connections or a Jesus connection or a Jesus person? How will you respond to them? Will you give them the serpent you or the servant you? Those that seek to develop are wiser than those that seek to destroy. If you're taking notes, write this down. Those that seek to develop are wiser than those that seek to destroy. They're wiser. It's the easiest thing 
to destroy and to pluck down. But it is the hardest thing. It is the hardest thing to build. It takes time. It takes patience. It takes strategy for you to build. Always remember that. It's so easy to tear down. If you pit up Legos and a little child runs and pushes it, it's so easy to push it down. But for you to set it up, it takes time, strategy, focus, wisdom. It takes intelligence, self-control, self-restraint. But when you develop, you pit work in, you exercise godliness. What will you choose to be with your life? A serpent or a servant? What will you choose to be? What are you choosing to be with your life? A serpent or a servant? Because if you choose to be a servant, you know what's going to happen? You're going to use every opportunity in your life to be a solution to someone. You're never going to fight anybody. You're going to fight for everybody. If you choose to be a servant. When I say servant, I mean you choose to see what needs to be fixed and fix it. You choose to be a student of God's wisdom. Let him give you wisdom on how to be a solution to a matter. It's so easy to criticize. It's easy. It's so easy to slander. But when will your presence produce change in others? When will your presence influence others to be light and not darkness? It's so easy for you to arouse people to do evil. But it takes uniqueness to train people to walk in honor and to see things from gentleness and to react to things from peace and wholeness. It's so easy for you to unlock people with broken reactions. But it takes wisdom to unlock people to be honorable, respectful, patient, submissive. Whenever you meet somebody that when you're around them, you become more submissive. You become more attentive and respectful. You solve problems and lift burdens and destroy yokes. When you meet people like that, they are filled with the Holy Spirit. When you meet people that when after you have a conversation with them, you want to serve God at your highest. You want to be more forgiving, more faithful, more focused, more patient, more excellent, more wise, more thankful, more pleasurable to people that meet you. When you meet people like that, you know that Jesus lives in them. It's so easy to meet people that after you talk to them, you want to fight. After you talk to them, you want to get revenge. After you talk to them, you want to hurt somebody. You want to harm somebody. You want to kill somebody. You want to fight. You want to get violent. It's those type of people are common. You don't have to go to anywhere to locate people like that. They're everywhere. But when you meet people that the Holy Spirit lives in them, after you talk with them, you'll have the joy of servanthood in you. And you'll look at your geography and you will become the deliverer to your geography. Your geography will become a place where you are a doctor, a healer. Now, wherever you are, it will no longer be a burden. It will be a blessing. And you will destroy whatever evil is there 
with your good. You will remove any darkness that's there with light. And you will substitute the foolishness in that area with wisdom. And wherever there's problem, you won't criticize. You will solve it. You will dissolve it with your presence. King Jesus didn't look at the man with the withered hand and say, why is your hand withered? You must have sinned. What you been doing with your hands? How did your hand wither up? You cursed. He goes and he causes the man's hands to come out. He causes the man's hands to grow. Imagine he decided to take the opportunity to observe a problem and become a servant to it instead of a serpent to it. The reason why the Pharisees criticized King Jesus and said, how could you heal a man on the Sabbath? Because they're a serpent instead of a servant. Do you see how serpents operate? Serpents have many accusations, but servants, they bring answers. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Those Pharisees was never going to heal that man. They were never going to make his hand whole. They actually got angry that the man got wholeness. I challenge you for the rest of your life. That you'll choose to be a servant to every place that God pitched you. That you'll lose the spirit of pettiness. Lose the, the, the spirit of pettiness. Don't you want to be a light? Don't you want to be an answer? Don't you want to birth peace and joy? Don't you want to cause others to become sensitive to God and fear God and worship God? Don't you want to create an atmosphere and a stream of love in people's hearts? Don't you want to make people more kind, more fruitful in Holy Spirit fruit, that they will turn from the voice to do evil? Don't you want to become that? This is the time to make a difference and be different. Don't give the same advice as everybody else. Give a different advice. When somebody comes to you and they say, oh, I want to fight and I want to get back. I got to do this. You say, hey. Forgive those you have ought against. Pray for those that despitefully use you. Follow what King Jesus said about matters like this. Be different. Be different. Because after all, you're going to have to stand before the Lord Jesus. And you're going to have to give an account of all the things that you responded to, how you reacted, how you handled yourself in pressure. You're going to have to give an answer. When you give an answer, Will the answer be good? Or will you be ashamed on the day of judgment because you responded wrong when God gave you a chance to disperse his light, disperse joy? People like that are very rare. So I call you on the beckoning, on the behalf of the Father to become a servant to your assignment and not a serpent. Everybody, I want you to share this broadcast. Invite your followers right now. Everybody, get the gospel out. Share this broadcast.